This has been a very important year for islet transplantation because uh, the first results from international trials and experience uh, worldwide are clearly indicating that uh, clinical results long term of islet transplantation have been improving steadily so that now we have the best protocols which use an induction with uh, agents that uh, uh, attack T cells at the beginning of the anti rejection strategy, combined with a strategy to block the inflammatory response that immediately follows an islet transplant, are the best combination to, to gain results at five years or seven years that are now equal to those of pancreas transplantation or, or for an organ transplant. Well, now we have uh, the results at five years have more than 50% of the patients that can still maintain insulin independence following an islet transplant. And only a few years ago, there was the fear that islet transplant continued to fail over time and that after five years, only 15% of the patient could still be of insulin. So the tailoring of the anti-rejection strategy combined to the understanding of the critical role of anti-inflammatory strategies at the beginning in the peritransplant period in the first seven, ten days post-transplant have uh, led to, to a substantial improvement of the long-term uh, uh, clinical results with now uh, a success rate that in the best case scenario uh, reach 70% at seven years or greater than 50% at five years. Right now, uh, the, the consensus is that, uh, that islet transplants can indeed work uh, in the long term if appropriately treated from the very beginning of the first week post-transplant. So we are now at the critical final years of a phase three registration trials to bring islet transplantation to FDA towards a biological license application, which means towards regulatory approval and be able eventually to have insurance reimbursement. So this is a, is a very important year because this would allow to perform islet transplantation in patients with the most severe cases of type 1 diabetes, where you can justify the requirement for anti-rejection drugs for uh, life. So, so far, Islet transplantation remains an experimental procedure until it will be approved. We have to finish the registration trials and the objective, the primary objective is then to make sure that this will become available to all patients who may need it that experience the most severe cases with uh, severe hypoglycemic episodes, hypoglycemic unawareness and so on. To do this you have to develop effective strategies to perform transplantation of insulin producing cells without anti-rejection therapy for life. So that's why we are moving uh, forward with the efforts of the Diabetes Research Institute Federation worldwide and uh, now expanded to the Cure Focus Research Alliance to bring in multidisciplinary effort and team of investigators that can collaborate towards new strategies that are cure focus, uh, including tolerance induction, development of uh, nano encapsulation, conformal coating, encapsulation technology, tissue engineering, uh, hybrid devices for local immunomodulation, and all the new wave of technologies that may allow us in the future to perform an islet cell transplant or a transplant of insulin producing cells without immunosuppression, because only then you will be able to talk about effective treatment strategies and a cure. You have to replace the insulin producing cells without introducing any side effect or danger for the recipient, such those associated with anti-rejection therapy. Initially, we are focusing on establishing an effective tissue engineer site for performing islet transplantation or in the future transplantation of insulin producing cells outside the liver, that is the place, the organ where now islets are infused. So there is a very important trial in collaboration with Akensak uh, University Medical Center in New Jersey where we will test uh, new scaffolding tissue engineering technology in a new site intraperitoneal to allow physiologic insulin delivery 
uh, following islet transplantations, such as reproducing the site of a pancreas well, as an auxiliary pancreas. And this would provide a baseline platform technology that could serve then for any kind of cellular therapy, whether it will be stem cells or other form of insulin producing cells derived from other tissues or islet transplantation. So this first step of establishing an engineer site and microenvironment where transplanting insulin producing cells will then serve as a base to add strategy for local immunomodulation, encapsulation or immunoprotection to allow transplantation without immunosuppression, without uh, lifelong anti-rejection drugs. Well, definitely uh, tolerance induction, the ability to reset the clock before uh, autoimmunity. And, uh, and I think there have been dramatic step forward thanks to Julio Voltarelli and groups in, uh, in Brazil and in the United States and now teaming up with Europe to show how you can actually reset the clock to pre-autoimmunity and avoid the need of insulin at the onset for over 40 months. And they're now entering a new phase of clinical trials. So they show proof of concept that we can block uh, diabetes is a, is a target within uh, reach. Now, to fine tune this kind of strategies and allow permanent uh, resolution of autoimmunity will be the key next step. It's not sufficient to reverse diabetes for three, four years. We have to do it long term. the field of uh, pancreatic regeneration and stem cell differentiation towards insulin producing cells. We now have uh, the first uh, uh, strategies and the first technologies that allow you to generate uh, insulin producing cells from embryonic stem cells, the first experimental test of transforming non-insulin producing cells from the patient on body into insulin producing cells. And this is a very uh, exciting field because it will allow us to move eventually out of the requirement of a transplantation that requires a donor organ because this will always limit the availability of organs pancreas that we can use for islet transplantation so the the ability to learn how to convert our own precursor cells into insulin producing cells or how to tissue reprogram like cells that are in another tissue or organ to become pancreatic insulin producing cells is a very exciting perspective. The whole area of uh, engineering and providing a shield, a, a barrier, a semi-permeable barrier around the cells that produce insulin to protect, protect them from the immune attack uh, is another very exciting uh, possibility that, that will allow us to move even further in the ability to transplant without anti-rejection drugs. Uh, Microencapsulation has been around for uh, decades and uh, one of the problems of this technology has been the fact that the size of the capsule of these spheres that are put around the eyelids to protect them from the immune attack were too large. There was too, too much dead space that would inhibit diffusion of oxygen and nutrient. Now with the new technologies in nanoencapsulation and conformal coating, the, the coating are becoming so small that we think in the future we'll be able to uh, solve many of the problems that have decreased islet function post-transplantation in encapsulated islets before.